difference. Right? The difference is things like mouse and all these other things, they were serialized uh, to agree and came together, but you are certainly amongst the first of the time to say, no, I, it's just gonna, it's gonna be done when it gets done, and it's gonna be out, and that was way different. Uh, right, I mean, Eisner had done that, but Eisner had a real um, wind behind his sails uh, uh, from his long career and a great deal of esteem in the community. Um, DC Comics, you know, thought about uh, serializing Stuck with Baby and Pamper, and I said, no, we really must not do that, because I promise you the book would not exist if they had done it. There would have been, you know, the first two issues were sold because out of curiosity, oh, here's this underground comics guy doing a series, uh, and it's gay and all that, and it's, it would have been curiosity, so then two or three issues, the sales would have dropped, and then um, it, it would have been canceled. I knew that I wanted people to have to commit to buy the book or not buy the book, and uh, have it all in one place that they can read right through. So uh, that made it a little harder, on a harder sale commercially. But uh, to their credit, DC Comics, uh, you know, they really went with this. Uh, the guy who uh, signed, uh, negotiated the contract for Stuck Over Baby uh, was uh, Mark Nevelo who was the uh, editor-in-chief of the division, the Piranha Press division of DC Comics, which had been established to do experimental, uh, different kinds of uh, comics uh, than you expected from DC. And uh, although he left DC about six months after I had begun work on the book, uh, fortunately the, the follow-up editors, uh, uh, Andy Helfer and uh, Bronwyn uh, Tiger, uh, they honored his pledge to me that I would have a great deal of creative freedom. I mean, virtually unlimited creative freedom once, once my working script had been approved. Uh, they did want to make sure that I actually knew where this was going. But uh, I did a working script, which took about six months. <coughs> and then it was approved with the understanding that I would be changing it all along, because that's what I always do in my comics. It always, it always involves some changes in our revise and add new scenes and take out scenes and stuff. I told them, you've just got to, you know, if you don't trust me, don't, don't do the book. Uh, look at my past work, decide if it seems like I do things professionally and I have reasonable taste and I'm responsible. And if, you, if my previous work convinces you of that, then let's do this, but I want to do it my way. And I can't, I'm not going to do it with editorial approval at every step. For one thing, I don't draw doing pencils that some editor can approve before doing inks. And in doing underground comics, I just developed this system where essentially I've got a bunch of, you know, blank sheets of Strathmore illustration board that I'm going to draw pages on. I have a sense of how many pages they're going to be in a story or in the case of Stuck or Lady on a chapter. And I draw a panel to completion on this page, and I draw a panel to based on the parts of the scene that have congealed the most in my mind. Because there are always some scene, okay, I really know, I can visualize this, this is going to be this way. There's this area where I feel like the transition could be better than it is in the script. So I'm going to hold off on that. So you wind up with pages with one or two panels over here, and another page with a panel over here, and bit by bit, I fill it in, and you wind up with the finished product. Uh, there's no way I could have submitted that to the normal DC vetting. And uh, that was, those were the terms that Mark Neville agreed to and uh, that Andy Helfer and Ron Taggart uh, honored, uh, which is why the book was able you know, to come through. It'd be pretty much as much my book as any other comic book story I ever did. Well, I'm going to ask you one more question, then we're going to throw it open to the floor here. What you're seeing on the screen now, these are prelims to the covers of Stuck Rubber Baby, and you can see the, the third prelim there is getting a lot closer to what Howard had intended. So Howard, my last question to you before we open it up is, uh, at the time, in terms of or what, you're, what you're looking at now, 15 years later, to have this brought back, uh, I, mean, I think this shows your value as not just a cartoonist, but a great writer, because it is a great written book as well as a great drama. 15 years later, to have it come back, what does that mean to you? Well, uh, this book is very dear to my heart, and it was uh, hard to accomplish uh, for economic reasons. Although I did get a, a 
enormous advance from DC Comics that, you know, 10 times as large as any advance I had ever gotten. Uh, it was about half as much as I needed. Um, and so I wound up having to uh, go into all kinds of debt to complete it. But I, uh, I you know, what can you say? That this is, was satisfying to me as an artist at a level that no other project has been because it was four years of living and breathing this set of characters. Get up in the morning, I knew who I was going to spend my day with. Uh, I knew the challenges, uh, which scenes I was going to work on, it thrilled me. Uh, I was operating on all cylinders. And uh, I would like a lot of people to read it. And uh, hopefully, you know, getting it out with a fresh edition, and more people will become aware of it, and more people will read it. So we have, we have the Stuck Rubber Baby. New edition available, I'm sure it's all over the convention. We also, as we see up here on the screen, a couple other pieces by Howard from Petrack to Claude. Where can they pick that up? And sort of well, as well? well, here at the convention, the only place you're going to find from Petrack to Claude is at the Prism Comics booth. This is, in contrast to the big time Stucker or Lady project, this is a little time Howard Cruz self published uh, project, which I published uh, print on demand through Lulu.com because I uh, was tired of a lot of the gay stories that I've done over the years being on print. And I'd always felt that, you know, they should all be put together in one book, including the original Barefoot story that started it all, which had never been reprinted anywhere. And so uh, that's, uh, and you know, if you're familiar with uh, Lulu.com, and I'm sure some of the other people, they, they do very nice product. product. This uh, book uh, doesn't need to apologize at all for being um, self-published. So I encourage people who can't get your work in print any other way to uh, use print on demand because it's cost virtually nothing. Uh, you'll, but you won't make much money. <laughs> so there that. So let's throw it open. Let's throw it open some questions. Do we have any questions? I know we're a little tight on time. Go to the mic. Here. Do you want to come up to the mic? Yeah. Anybody else who has a question or two, come on up to the mic. We want to make sure we squeeze in as many as we can. Uh, Mr. Cruz, thank you so much for going to San Diego. Hey, comics made a huge impact on me when I was a kid in the early 80s. Uh, one of the joys of having a, uh, a creator here here in town is we can hear your, your real voice. Are there any uh, Alabama uh, voices that you can do from uh, Sucker or Baby or Orlando, things that, that sound better in the original Alabama? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, you know, we're, we're not all that conscious of our own accent, so I, uh, I mean, Sucker or Baby being placed in the South, unlike Wendell, which is placed in a very unnamed region, uh, as Eddie likes to tease me about, it's some small city that manages to have pretty much any gay institution um, that you can think of. Um, uh, but I specifically wanted to avoid, in Wendell, uh, giving it a regional identity. I wanted, and I specifically wanted to avoid it seeming like New York or San Francisco or LA. I wanted it to be somewhere that people could feel like, oh, this is sort of where I live. And, uh, but I didn't think, I don't think of it as particularly Southern. Uh, Stuck or Baby is drenched in Southerness. Uh, and, uh, you know, in my, in my middle ear, uh, as I wrote dialogue, I heard the voices of the people I went to school with and the people I knew in my life. And I tried, I tried, tried hard to build the characters on the kinds of people that I knew. So those are the the voices I hear. I don't know if Wendell has a southern accent or not. Do we have any other questions? We're gonna make them nice and concise. Okay, great. I'm so excited to see Wendell and Stuck Rubber Baby back out. I'm wondering what's next for you. I mean nobody sums up the, the times like you do. Um, what's next? Well uh, everything's in transition right now. I just uh, I've been teaching at a college in uh, Massachusetts, where I live in a small town in Massachusetts so, with Eddie. And uh, the college there, I taught a cartooning course for a while. And uh, then when I turned, uh, uh, when I turned 63, I think, uh, Eddie started nagging me. He said, you know, you're eligible for Social Security now. Why don't you, we go ahead and go on Social Security and uh, You'll get a little check every month, and why don't you just start being an artist and doing what you want to do instead of having to worry about freelancing and uh, going where the money is. 
because that's been a big issue. I mean, it took me 10 years to get out of the hole uh, when we stuck with the way we left me. Um, and uh, in those years, I have done a lot of small projects. I don't know now, frankly, where I'm going to go because the whole, everything has changed. The kinds of markets, the kind of places that used to publish them, underground comics, local uh, alternative newspapers, um, everything, uh, everything is disintegrated. Uh, print, we all know what the problem is with print uh, these days. It's, uh, and uh, doing stuff for the web is tempting creatively. Uh, on the other hand, uh, in a way it feels like you're sort of throwing yourself out there. I don't know, there's something psychological about doing stuff that, where nobody pays you. It's one thing to, you know, you don't want to be a slave to money, but you also want people to appreciate you and to, you know, some way or other manifest that. And uh, I don't know about doing a free web comic, which is interesting. And also, uh, part of me wants to go back and write more plays or do other kind of art forms. When I was doing Stuck with Baby, I know people sort of want to say, oh, there's another how to graphic novel kind of thing. I had the feeling this was a mountain I could only climb once. It was there, it was, I was curious. I think anybody who does comics who's serious has to wonder, what would I do if I did a graphic novel and could I do it? And Stuck with Baby was my chance to actually say, okay, I mean, the graphic novel looks going to be a huge canvas, it's big enough to deal with big issues like racism and to uh, have a you know, whole panoply of interesting personalities. Uh, but I, I don't have like a s stack of novels lined up waiting to be done. Um, and I don't know, the life we live in, uh, do people want to read about small Massachusetts towns or not? You know, I think Howard Cruz does that. We're out of time, everyone, but Howard is around the show at various panels. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be I'm going to be at the prison booth uh, doing uh, signings. I think in uh, half an hour from now. I'll be I'll be hiding what? outside here, outside of the room, selling copies of uh, my book here. So if anybody wants to ask questions, or we're right out of time, please see Howard at the prison booth. And everyone, let's give a great round of applause here.